You are listening to continuing coverage of the trial of Chad Daybell from True Crime Today and the Hidden Killers podcast. Let's go back to the courtroom. You solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you back? Yes. All right. Now that Mr. Pulowski has been placed under oath, I do have an inquiry before we start on direct. Mr. Pulowski, there is a exclusionary order not allowing you to listen to any court proceedings before you've testified. And this case has been streamed live as well as open to the public. So have you listened to or reviewed in any way any testimony that's occurred in the trial since it started? No, sir. All right. Have you talked to anyone else about their testimony? No. All right. Thank you. Ms. Blake, you can inquire on direct. Thank you, Your Honor. Would you please state your name and spell it for the record? Ian Pulowski, I-A-N-P-A-W-L-O-W-S-K-I. Do you know an individual named Lori Vallow? Yes. How do you know her? I met her through my wife, Melanie Pulowski. Do you know if she's related to Melanie Pulowski? She's her aunt. Do you know an individual named Alex Cox? Yes. And how do you know him? Also met through my wife, Melanie, and he is her uncle. Do you know an individual named Chad Daybell? Yes. And how do you know him? Met through Melanie, uh, married Lori Vallow. Do you recall approximately when you met Lori and Chad? I believe it was the 23rd or 24th of November, 2019. Did you meet them in person? Yes. Do you recall where they were located when you met them? Uh, They were in the apartment just next to Melanie's apartment in Rexburg. And do you recall when you first met Alex Cox? It was the night that Melanie and I got married. And do you recall approximately when that was? November 30th, 2019. So he was not present when you met Chad and Lori? No. At a later date, did you have a conversation with Chad and Lori over Zoom? Yes. Why did you have that call with them? It was to ask their blessing in marrying Melanie. And why did you want to ask their blessing in marrying her? Because of how I understood the relationship that they had. What did you understand about Melanie's relationship with them? That um, Melanie had a a kind of a parental view on them. Um, Chad and Lori were kind of guides and supports to her at that point in her life. When you reached out to them on Zoom, did the call actually take place? Yes. Did you end up asking for their blessing? Yes. Did they give it to you? Yes. Do you recall anything else that happened during that call? Um, They gave me, you know, in addition to, you know, giving me a blessing, you know, or saying, you know, they're, they approve of me marrying Melanie. uh, They gave me a, a religious blessing. Was anything strange about the religious blessing to you? It was unorthodox based on uh, the LDS beliefs that I held at the time. Um, They, talked about shielding me with light, um, removing dark weapons from me. Um, the fact that it did not incur, occur in person, typically, you know, in LDS faith, when you receive a blessing, it's by the laying on of hands and not over Zoom. Had you ever had a blessing like that before? No. Did you end up saying anything about thinking it was a little odd? Yeah. Did you say it to Chad and Lori at that time? No, I said it to Melanie. When you first met Chad and Lori on the 23rd or 24th of November, Do you recall if you met Tylee Ryan at that time? I didn't. Did you meet J.J. Vallow? No. Did you ever see them anywhere around? No. Did Lori ever mention them to you? No. Did Chad make mention of them? No. When you had the Zoom call, where were you located? I was at my sister's house in Arizona. Do you know where Chad and Lori were at that time? I didn't. Had Melanie shared, you said you mentioned the blessing was odd to Melanie. At any point, did Melanie share some of the beliefs she'd been taught? Yes. At some point, did you start hearing some of those beliefs or teachings from Chad and Lori? Yes. When Melanie was sharing those with you, was that prior to your marriage? Yes, there was some that was shared prior to my marriage. And then the bulk of it was uh, the night that we got married. Initially, were you somewhat open to some of the ideas she was sharing? Yes. How long did you remain open to those ideas? Until the night we got married. What changed that night? The the weight of what she was sharing, the implications of what she was sharing. It was um, just hearing that she feared that Tylee and JJ may have been, been in danger at that time. Um, and the behavior that she was seeing from Chad and Lori at that time. 
Did what she shared with you cause you concern? Yes. Did something happen that next morning to amplify your concern? Yes. That next morning, um, my daughter thought it would be funny to play hide and seek. And so I got up, I was looking for her. She would not answer. It was quiet in that hotel room for about five minutes. I couldn't find her. And then I heard some giggling. She was behind a curtain. Based on what was shared with you, did you have concerns for the safety of JJ and Tylee? Yes. Did you have concerns for other people's safety? Yes, I did. Who were those individuals? Uh, My two children and my ex-wife. At some point, did you go to law enforcement with your concerns? Yes. Do you recall approximately when that would have been? I believe that was December 4th or 5th. Did you sit down with law enforcement at that time? Yes. Did you participate in an interview? Yes. Did law enforcement end up asking for your assistance? Yes. As part of that, did they ask you to record conversations? Yes. Did they instruct you to only record those conversations if you were present and part of the conversation? Yes. Did Chad and Lori ever talk to you or talk in front of you about people being light or dark? Yes. Do you recall specifically talk of law enforcement? Yes. What was shared with you in relation to law enforcement? That there were specific detectives that had been possessed. Um, I can't remember. There were a few different types of possession that they discussed. um, And I can't remember specifically what type of possession they classified. But there were were a few detectives named. Did they... And at the time these conversations took place, they would have been after December 4th or 5th of 2019? Yes. Do you recall approximately what time period you would have had these conversations or done the recordings? Uh, Would have been the weekend that Melanie and I went on our honeymoon to Jackson. Do you recall what weekend that would have been? It was the weekend of my birthday, so December 6th, 7th, and 8th, I believe. During that time, was there a recording made with... Lori and Chad on the call? Yes. Were Zulema and Alex also on the call? Yes. And you and Melanie? Yes. Do you recall learning that Alex had passed away? Yes. Do you recall approximately when that would have been? I want to say that was December 10th or 11th. Of 2019? 2019, yes. Do you recall making a recording that day as well? Yes. And on that call, do you recall Chad and Lori being on the call? Uh, Yes. And you and Melanie? Yes. When these calls were being made, had you learned whether Tylee and JJ were missing? Yes. And did you know they were missing at that time? Yes. Where were you living in December of 2019? I had an apartment just across the street from Melanie's. And I, but I, at that point after we got married, I had moved into Melanie's apartment. And was that in Rexburg, Idaho? Yes. Do you recall Chad telling you anything in relation to whether or not you should move? Yes. And what did he direct? That we should leave as soon as possible. Just get away from law enforcement, basically. When you talked about Melanie's relationship with Chad and Lori, did she look to them as a mother and father figure? Yes. Do you feel she was susceptible to what they were telling her? Yes. Overall, yes, she was. Your Honor, I have what's been marked as State's Exhibit 266A. It is a thumb drive. I am going to be asking to publish it. All right. And... Describe what the contents are. The recordings that were just referenced, I think I'll need to lay some additional foundation, and I recognize that, but it may include needing to play a portion of it to allow Mr. Pulowski to identify it. Okay, very well. And if I can be handed that. All right, Mr. Bailiff, we'll have that uh, exhibit. Please return to counsel. And then for the limited purpose of establishing foundation, you can play a small portion without any uh, content that would otherwise not be admissible. And Mr. Pulowski, you talked about making some recordings at the request of law enforcement. Do you recall that? Yes. And you talked about making one recording when you were on your honeymoon in Jackson? Yes. And again, do you recall when that was? December 6th, I believe, or 7th that I made the recording. And did you, in fact, turn those recordings over to law enforcement? I did. And if you were to hear a portion of what's purported to be that recording, do you think you would recognize it? Absolutely. Your Honor, I would ask to publish just the first portion. You may. So, so when Lucifer attacks... And I'll stop it right there. Were you able to hear those initial voices? Yes. Do you recognize the female voice? Yes, that's Melanie. And do you recognize the male voice that was heard? I'm not sure if that was Chad or Alex. 
In what you heard from Melanie, do you recall this being the recording from the day we talked about? Yes. And Your Honor, I would move for admission of States Exhibit 266A. Any objection? With the understanding, Judge, that the entire recording of 266A is, is included as an exhibit. If that's the case, there's no objection. Okay. Um, Ms. Blake, I'll admit it. I would like you, if you can, to reference the, uh, if you have, for example, the length or duration of the call so that we can confirm that it's the entire recording being admitted. Yes, Your Honor. The jump drive being admitted into evidence will have 87 minutes. It's the state's intent and request to publish portions of that, and I will put the time marks on the record as we publish those. All right, that works. Thank you, Ms. Blake. So 266A is admitted in its entirety. And Your Honor, for the record, I'm moving to the mark 636, so six minutes and 36 seconds. Thank you. You guys heard about good yesterday? No, what? But what she was talking to Dave, and Dave said the reason he wasn't moving forward in their relationship is because he never got a confirmation on zombies. Right. He doesn't believe she was really ordained. And when, if she was really ordained in 140,000, he'd be done with Peter James and Brennan. Right. So he's not buying anything. And uh, Gibb said, talk yourself into thinking that the only way to clear her conscience is to call the police and tell them that she knows which is that she never had JJ, and when she asked whether it was, you and I told her that she was better off not knowing. I said that? That's what she says. She threw me under the bus for nothing? Yes. Walking uh, in the park. No, not just you. She was throwing everybody under the bus. She was throwing everybody under the bus because she thought the cops were the end of the world and that was going to clear her conscience with God, which made she didn't even know what anything is. But she was going to you are? And I'm stopping at eight minutes, 50 seconds. <laughs> Mr. Pulowski, we hear several people on there. Yes. The first man on the call, did you recognize his voice now that you heard more of it? Yes. And who was that? That was Alex. And we hear another female join in initially. Could you tell who that was? That was Ulema. And it's hard to hear, but did you hear Alex talking about Dave? Yes. Do you know who he was referencing? I believe he's referencing David Warwick. And he was talking about Dave's not buying anything. Right. Do you know what that was in reference to? I believe at that time they were, um, Melanie Gibb and David Warwick were both kind of, I don't know how, I, I never met them in person, never discussed anything with them in person. I never heard them on calls. So I don't know how pulled into it they were at that time, but they were essentially trying to step away because things were starting to get a little too hot. And the indication was that Dave's not buying it. And there was also talk of Melanie Gibb was going to go to the police. Mm -hmm. Did you hear that? Yes. And she was going to tell the police she never had JJ. Did you also hear that part? Yes. Did you know what that was in relation to? No. And then at some point, a female says, Raphael, do you know who that was referencing? Yes. And who was that? Chad. And then it sounds like two more individuals joined the call. Could you tell who the female was? That was Lori. And could you tell who the man was? That was Chad. And there's reference to mommy and daddy. Right. Was that in relation to Melanie as if she were their child? Correct. Yes. And you talk about Melanie sobbing. Yes. Were you present with Melanie? I was. Did she appear overcome with emotion? Yeah. She was relieved to hear their voices. Had she not heard from them in some time? Throughout my those first few weeks, they had a tendency to call in and then disappear for a few days or a week at a time. And did you know where Chad and Lori were located when that call took place? No. Mr. Plosky, I'm sorry. Would you scoot up a little closer yes, to your mic while you testify? And I think if you put the mic just under your chin, I believe they're directional. Okay. It might pick you up a little better. 
I'm next going to move to, actually, let me try to get it there. I'm going to be starting at nine minutes, 25 seconds. Oh, well, I had that yesterday, too. Yeah. Well, it was, was out yesterday. It's attacked us all so bad. It was emotional for me yesterday. Like, I just missed my kids, like, not the bawling in the temple. But. Your Honor, I'm going to stop it at nine minutes, 40 seconds. There was some talk on there about some attacks. And Melanie talks about an emotional attack with in relation to her kids. Do you know what's being referenced there? Was someone actually being attacked? There were no physical attacks. What they're referencing were spiritual attacks from Satan. Did that link back to the blessing that you were given by Chad? Yes. Had you heard of spiritual attacks before, like they were talking about them? Yes. And had you heard about them from someone besides this group? I had only heard the well, these types of attacks from Melanie. They're going to be moving to... 14 minutes, 15 seconds. Horrible. Is he one of the bad ones? Horrible. Is he one of the bad ones? Yeah, him and the Hope are the two bad ones. I wondered if it was Lieutenant Ball. Lieutenant Ball kept bringing me food and water. And I was like, is he poisoning me? <laughs> He's like, here's some fresh banana bread. And I was like, oh, I don't know about those banana bread. <laughs> He's probably good. The other ones are good. Hope, you said? Hope and your guy. Yeah, so he has all my stuff. And stopping at 14 minutes, 44 seconds. In there, do you hear the reference that Hope and Hermesio are the bad ones? Yes. Do you know where Hope and Hermesio work? Yes. Where do they work? Rexburg Police Department. Next, I will be going to minute mark 20, well, mark 20 minutes, 38 seconds. Hello. It's all about, it's all about, yeah. Just that she's not good. She's she's well she's doubting and falling because of Dave. Just that she's gonna go tell the police that she's like Yeah, and throw all this under the bus. I don't know, that makes makes sense. Remember, I always got that thing about her that Yeah, and I was like so I was just mama bear claws towards you. Like I was like yeah, well, the Lord kept saying, like, Melanie, like, you don't trust her, but just let L'Oreal have her, you know, experience with that. And I just keep, you know, doing what I'm doing. And it bothered me because I was like, I want to trust her because you trust her. And I kept getting something else. So it makes sense now, I guess. Uh, it's Dave that's caused the problem. So. Yeah. Well, how do you see it going, I guess? I like, that, that is it's bad for her. In every way, because we can't trust her anymore. She does that for one. Mm -hmm. For two, it ruins her place with us. But for three, you call the police and you tell them that you're a liar, and then you try to tell them something that's the truth. They're going to be like, you just said you were a liar. Right. So I don't know if I trust that at all. Right. So you kind of shoot yourself in the foot. You call them and tell them that you lied, and then try to tell them the truth. Right. I don't see it going anywhere bad for any of us. And stopping at 22 minutes, 18 seconds. Mr. Pulowski, do you hear in there again talk of Dave and Melanie? Yes. Do you know which Dave they're referencing? It's, I believe, yeah, it's still David Warwick. And the Melanie? Melanie Gibb. And did you, you hear in there again talk of Melanie was going to go to the police and tell him she lied? Yes. And do you hear Lori's responses that there's going to be three things for her? Right. One, that she's essentially lost her place with this group. Is that correct? Yes. One, she has all this knowledge and she may be accountable for it. Yes. And third, that now she's going to go tell the police the truth after lying. Yes. Do you know what Melanie Gibb had lied to the police about? She had lied to the police about having, I believe it was just JJ in her possession. And again, there's a reference to Dave kind of being the problem or Melanie's falling because of Dave. Did you hear that as well? Yes. You're on her next time moving to 22 minutes, 45 seconds. Um, so Zulie had said that you guys felt that maybe we should consider going to Idaho Falls for a little while. And we prayed about it and felt like, I don't know, I felt like either one will be fine. Like we're going to be okay no matter what. So I don't know if there's a better option or in a good option, but we kind of just felt like we're okay to stay there. Like that's our home and we're making it. 
just our place of light and it'll be protected. But is there something we need to be aware of or? Um, well, the only worry was if they're still watching you. Yeah, but how do you do it? Yeah, well, they are. And they're probably tracking my phone and listening in or whatever, but I'm aware we're just doing our own thing and kind of just, just hanging out together. So we're at my apartment. Where you're at, well, right now we're in Jackson, but we we've started. We've just been sleeping at my apartment, and we're um, putting the 30 days on his apartment. He lives literally across the street at those other apartments. So, um, I did find a house that was really cute, fifteen hundred dollars a month up there in Rexburg. Yeah, and that might be a good place to go Maybe you want to move. I mean, if you guys are thinking we need to move, I kind of felt like we were fine. Like, kind of like, pretty much what can they do? I mean. And stopping at 24 minutes, 23 seconds. Could you, outside of you and Melanie, could you hear the other Mel and female on there? Yes. Or, excuse me, I don't think you're on there. Outside of Melanie, do you know who the other female was that was speaking? That was Lori. And do you know who the Mel was? That was Chad. And... Chad indicated he had a worry that they were still watching Melanie. Right. Do you know who he was referring to? The police, law enforcement in general. Had law enforcement talked to Melanie? At that point, I don't believe they had. And had you talked to law enforcement? Yes. Did you know they were actively looking for JJ and Tylee? Yes. Moving to minute 26, second 07. Yeah, I don't think it's going to keep going. What could they possibly do? Well, he said he's not going to stop until, you know, until they get what they want. So I don't know. <laughs> There's some. So you need to get out of that. Oh, okay. Not rush out of there. But they're not going to leave you alone. I just sent the network pretty deep and they're going to see you as the target since you're the only one that they really can find at the moment. For your own sake, for your own sanity. Okay. We know you were left there and it worked for two months for us as we planned to got together and you found Ian and now a different phase of your life has begun. So his kids are in Rexburg and Natalie. I know. You don't have to move super far away. Just a different city? Yeah. Madison County. You know, well, it's in Rexburg. I'm not saying you got to decide tonight. It's that complex, went from a blessed place to a cursed place due to the yeah. wickedness of the police. Yeah, we did not expect the police to be that wicked. Well, and if it is, if it is just going to be a couple of weeks, like we could do an Airbnb and just stay in Idaho Falls somewhere. I mean, Ian works there, and that's right. close enough to where we could go pick up the kids, and they wouldn't even know that we're not in Rexburg. But do you feel like a whole physical change of address and moving everything to a new place is what will be best? I do. I know it's pain, but I think they're not going to let you go on. So you're out of that city. Like the Saints in Missouri, I just keep moving and I can't find a safe place. (laughs) Even sugar, even... Like, you know. So how do you get Air Matheo to stop? Because he's not going to stop. He's so, he's so, in, like, raged with this whole thing. He was just pacing, like, yelling at me. Like, he's, he's like, I'm not going to stop for anything. And how do you, how do you resolve that, I guess? You get out of it. Right. Okay. He's not going anywhere. It's like the standard story where the, we can stay in one place and the right to flee. In this case, it's not a whole community, it's you. You and Ian fleeing out of the way of darkness. Like Lee, I had to leave Jerusalem. I was expecting this to go on and on, but I live every two weeks. <laughs> Maybe get on, go on, or whatever website and just investigate a little bit. I saw a cute little house for sale in At- well, Ashton's further from your work. So yeah. probably forty minutes. Probably I don't know if will be the best. But isn't Rexburg like the place of safety when all things happen? Yeah, but there's been lots of prophecies about major turmoil there. The plague's gonna sweep through Rexburg. Civil unrest. I had a vision of Second East where McDonald's is and everything. Just chaos, people starving, fighting. So there is still a stretch of 
Matt. I'm coming to Rexburg before the city of Hawaii. So we had to kind of pave the way, but and we were told to flee. <laughs> Mostly because of the it's because of agency, right? We were all told to go there and that was where we were supposed to stay. And because of the agency of the dark and because Lucifer is able to negotiate terms still to this day about eternal law. He's been allowed to do certain things that had to force us out with the police. We had no idea the police were infiltrated with such dark people in Rexburg itself proper. So we... Makes sense in retrospect, but you don't think that immediately that little Rexburg would be planted with Cain's translated followers, but that makes it's sense. Because there's so many like multi-creation being there. And of course, the dark ones are there too. So opposition and all things. So we just feel like it's time to just because of the situation, not be there for a season. Yeah. You don't have to go far. Uh, but just get out of their line of sight okay. for your own sanity. And and for Ian to be able to go to work and not and feel like you're okay there by yourself, you know. Yeah, yeah, it just feels that way. It just feels kind of eerie when Ian's not there. I just don't want to be there by myself. Right. I mean, you've done everything to decorate that place so cute, do everything so adorable. But I'm just working on I don't follow rental on Trulia. Several that are just as good as your apartment there. Little houses, decent sized houses. Yeah, that one's really for about the same price. That's really good. Yeah. Yeah, we'll we'll go wherever. I'll live in a dumpster with Ian. He's <laughs> he's so amazing. So, <laughs> but I know Falls is pretty good price in terms of rental, especially this time of year. You should be able to find a nice one. Okay. I just yeah, I hate to say that, but it's just pounding me that you need to get out of that city. <laughs> okay. Um. You did great, babe. You did great. With oh, we loved it. So amazing. Yeah. For you. He wanted to know uh, who I went to Arizona with. So I just, well, I drove with Ian. And um, yeah, I mean, he would be stopping at 33 minutes, 26 seconds. And looking at the clock, I'm assuming the court would like to break for lunch. Um, yeah, I think that would be an ideal time to do that if we can, Ms. Blake. Okay, we'll go ahead and take our lunch recess. Uh, we will return back at 1 o'clock. All right, please. Mr. Court, you get session. Thank you. Please be seated. We have the jurors return. Thank you. All right, please. Here's all President Counter for your honor. Thank you. Please be seated. Okay, we're back on the record on case CR 22211623, State of Idaho versus Chad Guy Daybell, continuing with direct examination of Mr. Pulowski after the lunch break. If the witness is available, he can return and we continue with your direct. All right, Mr. Pulowski is returned to the stand. I'll remind you, Mr. Pulowski, you are still under oath. And I am going to inquire simply because of the order of witnesses here, and we did have the lunch break. Did you discuss your testimony or anybody else's testimony about the trial while you were on the lunch break? I did not. Okay, thank you. You can continue, Ms. Blake. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Pulowski, right before we broke for lunch, we would listened to a little bit of a lengthier clip of that recording. Do you recall that? You'd have to refresh me a little bit. Um, do you recall in that clip that... Do you recall hearing Chad on that? Yes. And do you recall hearing Lori? Yes. And do you recall there being talk of you and Lori needing to move? Melanie and I. Or excuse me, yes. Melanie and you needing to move. Yes. And did Lori talk about that? Yes. And did Chad talk about that? Yes. And do you recall there being talk of Melanie feeling like she was having to flee? Yes. And do you recall Lori responding and basically saying that she and Chad were fleeing because of agency? Which I'm going to object at this point. We're leading the witness. Sustain. And your honor, I can replay the audio clip if, if we want to do that. 
you can. Okay. Thank you. All right. Your Honor, I'll be starting it from 26 minutes and seven seconds. Very well. Yeah, I don't think it's good going and going what could they possibly do well he says he's not going to stop until you know until they get what they want so i don't know <laughs> there's some so you need to get out of that oh, okay. rush out of there but they're not going to leave you alone i just sent the network is pretty deep and they're going to see you as the target since you're the only one that they really can find this moment for your own sake for your own sanity, be bad. Okay. We know you were left there and it worked for two months for us as we planned and got together and you found Ian and now a different phase of your life has begun. So his kids are in Rexford and Natalie. I know. You don't have to move super far away. Just a different city? Yeah. Madison. I'm not saying you got to decide tonight, but the tech complex went from a blessed place to a cursed place due to the yeah. wickedness of the police. Yeah, we did not expect the police to be that wicked. Well, and if it, if it is just going to be a couple weeks, like we could do an Airbnb and just stay in Idaho Falls somewhere. I mean, Ian works there. And that's right. close enough to where we could go pick up the kids and they wouldn't even know that we're not in Rexburg. But do you feel like a whole physical change of address and moving everything to a new place is what will be best? I do. I know it's a pain. But I think that they're not going to leave me alone. Okay. So you're out of that city. Like the Saints in Missouri, I just keep moving and I can't find a safe place. <laughs> even sugar, even like... You know. So how do you get Aaron Macio to stop? Because he's not going to stop. He's so he's so in, like raged with this whole thing. He was just pacing, like yelling at me, like he she's like I'm not going to stop for anything. And how do you how do you resolve that? I guess you get out of it. Like, okay. He's not going anywhere. It's like the standard story where the wicked stay in one place and the righteous flee. In this case, it's not a whole community, it's you. You went in, fleeing out of the way of darkness. Like Lee, I had to leave Jerusalem. I wasn't expecting it to go on and on and on to move every two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe get on Zillow and whatever website and just investigate a little bit. I saw a cute little house for sale in at well, Ashton's further from your work. So probably forty minutes. Probably I know falls will be the best. And I'm gonna pause at twenty nine forty seven. Mr. Pulowski, in listening to that, did you hear at the beginning where there was an indication Melanie saying he's not gonna stop until he gets what he wants? Yes. Do you know who the he is that she's talking about there? Uh Detective Aramasio. And do you recall hearing in there Chad speaking as well? Yes. And do you hear reference to Melanie essentially being a target for the police? Yes. So Chad and Lori were aware the police were trying to talk to Melanie? Yes. At any point in this recording, did Chad and Lori offer to come forward with the whereabouts of the children? No. Do you recall in here Chad again telling you and Melanie that you should move out of Rexburg? Yes. Do you recall Melanie asking how she gets Detective Hermesio to stop? Yes. Do you recall Chad's response? Yes. What was that? Get away. Do you recall him saying, essentially, you get out of his way? Yeah, just leave Rexburg. Did Chad or Lori at any point encourage Melanie to cooperate with the police? No. I'm going to continue playing. Yeah, but isn't Rexford like the place of safety when all the things happen? Yeah, but there's been lots of prophecies about major turmoil there. The plague's going to sweep through Rexburg. Civil unrest. I had a vision of Second East where McDonald's is and everything. Just chaos, people starving, fighting. So there is still a stretch of bad time coming to Rexburg before a city of life. So we right. end up kind of paved the way, but, and we were told to flee. <laughs> I'm going to pause at 30 minutes, 32 seconds. Did you hear Chad say we were told to flee? Yes. And at this point, were Chad and Lori in Rexburg? No. 
Did you know where they were? No. Did they disclose to you where they were? No. Because of, but it's because of the agency, right? We were all told to go there, and that was where we were supposed to stay. And because of the agency of the dark, and because Lucifer is able to negotiate terms still to this day about eternal law, he's been allowed to do certain things that had to force us out with the police. We had no idea the police were infiltrated with such dark people in Rex. I'm going to pause there at 31 minutes, three seconds. Did you hear Lori talking about part of why they fled? Yes. And did you hear her talk about anything in relation to the police? That they had been infiltrated. Clerk itself, proper. So we... Makes sense in retrospect, but you don't think that immediately. This little Rexburg would be planted with Cain translated followers. Did you hear Chad reference Cain's translated followers? Yes. Did you know what he meant by those those words? Not sure if I learned it before or after that point, but essentially that Cain had his own 12 dark disciples, um, immortal uh, disciples. And was Chad referencing those individuals as part of the police department? Yes. Judge, objection, calls for speculation. Overall. Makes it's sense. because of so many light like, multi creations being there. And of course, the dark ones are there too. So, opposition and all things. So, we just feel like it's time to, just because of the situation, not be there for a season. Yeah. You don't have to go far. Uh, but just get out of their line of sight okay. for your own sanity and fans and for Ian to be able to go to work and not and feel like you're okay there. By yourself, you know? Yeah, yeah, it just feels that way. It just feels kind of eerie when Ian's not there. I just don't want to be there by myself. Right. I mean, you've done everything to decorate that place so cute, do everything so adorable. But There's just working on, I don't know, Bob Rentals on Trulia. Several that are just as good as your apartment there. Little houses, decent sized houses. Yeah, that one's really For about the same price. That's really good. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll go wherever. I'll live in a dumpster with Ian. He's, he's, <laughs> he's so amazing, so. <laughs> but I know Paul's a pretty good price in terms of rental. Especially this time of year, you should be able to find a nice one. Okay. I'll stop there at 32 minutes, 51 seconds. Did you hear Chad referencing some possible rentals for you and Melanie to consider? Yes. So as well as encouraging you to move, he was suggesting potential places. Correct. And we talked before about your observations of Melanie's relationship with Chad and Lori. Yes. Would you say that she would turn to them for advice? Absolutely. I'm going to play starting at 34.57. I know, Dad, Dad, you were saying to get some money out just so so Natalie couldn't, like, come after finding out I had money and try to get more child support or whatever. So I went and got 50,000 out and this banker came up. Stopping at 3511. Do you, did you hear Melanie in that recording? Yes. When she says, dad, do you know who she was talking to? She's referring to Chad. And starting at 3558. How grateful we are. We are. We love him. Taking care of you. That's so sweet. Mel, do you need another blessing? Yeah, can you give me and Ian like a combined blessing? Whatever comes for either of us. Do you have any questions you want to ask? No. You can ask any. Sure. <laughs> we don't know what Ian knows. So you Ian know. knows everything. I have not. Ian has figured out most stuff by himself, but he. And stopping at 3629. Did you hear the reference in there to you know everything? Yes. Do you know what Melanie was referring to? The religious beliefs, um, kind of their their mission that they had chosen, um, what they believed their role was um, in the world. Did you learn things about light and dark? Yes. Did you learn things about casting? Yes. Did you learn things about people being zombies? Yes. And did you learn, was Melanie the one that shared those with you? Yes. Do you know where they originated? Chad. There was talk in there of giving you a blessing. Do you recall if Chad actually followed through with that? 
I believe you did. Yes. I think everybody took part in it. And again, we talked before about a blessing you received over Zoom. Mm -hmm. For this blessing, you were not present in the same place? Um, No, no. So was that also, was this out of the ordinary with what you would expect um, within the LDS faith? On this current recording? Yes. Yes. And starting at 3906. We go to Mel and Ian and Jackson and invite all those others. Ray Liel and Ilana. To join us and all others in the heavenly realm that are willing to participate at this time. Come jump in, baby. So I now, we all lay our hands on your head. This will be a dual blessing. Gave Zuema and Al blessings yesterday and the angels filled the room and I feel that the same number are there again. Same wonderful helpers, angelic ministers are there happily joining in on this blessing. So this time, I say to you, Ian and Melanie Blowski, by the power of the Holy Melchizedek Priestess and the Patriarchal Order of which we are a part of, and in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, we lay our hands upon your head in a united effort of happiness for your union and how vital it is to the overall plan of our Lord and Savior these latter days. You are a powerful couple with unlimited potential, and you'll be utilized by the Lord in tremendous missions of life and salvation for you. will team with Mother Earth to help cleanse the Earth at times through earthquakes, moving mountains, changing rivers, but also healing hearts of the of mankind through your powerful testimony. Trials you're going through right now are events that you'll be able to share with others who are experiencing trials in the future. You'll be able to relate to them and understand what they've been through, the persecutions that they've faced by supposed Christians, and you will make it so much easier for them to transition to accepting the gospel, I see you both all over the world through portals, helping those who need to come to Zion. I see you back and forth, raising your children, but also leaving in them in the care of trusted family members because of your great power and importance. You will spend days and weeks at a time helping bring groups to Zion. Those are wonderful promises, and I know they will come true. I bless you now on a more personal level. Uh, Melanie, you can quickly heal from your illness. Uh, <laughs> this combined group will use their healing power to strengthen you and bless you. You're, we reach into your physical body and extract any spiritual or physical illnesses, pain, phobias, all kinds of possible darkness that has been implanted in you, I remove it all. I sever all negative cords, and this, this blessing includes the end, that we are doing this for you as well, Ian, severing all negative cords and clearing you of weapons and lifting curses that may be, have been placed upon you. Now I just cleanse you of that darkness that was placed in you as a police station. Once again, we just thank you for your valiant way, your strong, resolute devotion to the gospel and to our team. What you've accomplished this week will resonate with you through, throughout your life and through the eternities. The blessings that you'll receive for your faithfulness and for taking the steps you have. I bless you now by binding your hearts together more than ever, literally wrapping around each other and putting cords of light around them that you cannot be separated spiritually, and that even the times where you're apart in the physical world, you'll still feel that connection and unity. You are a special couple who have known each other in the past and, and have helped each other so much already. And your union will be looked upon as a, a true love story, happiness and how to treat one another will be an example to thousands and even millions of how a man and a woman should should respect and love each other. I bless your union and know that the Savior is standing there with us and he is very pleased 
very, very pleased with your choices. They may, might not make sense to the celestial world, but in the terrestrial and celestial world, they make perfect sense. And for your valiant efforts, you will be memorialized, and they are singing praises in heaven. I see a choir of thousands. Like they make up the songs as they go, like Lolo does. <laughs> They're praising you too right now, and just singing, singing to the heavens for what you've accomplished. And I do want to include Alan's and Lemma in this blessing again. Just what a tremendous friendship we formed. Six of us are on the right track. I assure you of that. I give you my testimony that this is a power team that we are the genesis of the 144,000. We don't say that boastfully. It just is the beginning of a new terrestrial order. And Ian, we're so grateful you're a part of it. We love you already so much. We miss you and can't wait to see you again. And we will see each other again soon. And it feels like we're going into different corners of the world for a short time. Changes are coming quickly to the earth that will allow us to reunite and not be under the pressure of the celestial police forces. That they will have greater problems to deal with, and even those that are pursuing us may have their lives effort. And that will open up the way for us to use our powers fully and to continue to cleanse the earth and to bless it. Mother Earth loves each one of us and knows us. We will be helping her remove darkness from this world. I promise you a, a home in New Jerusalem, all of us, we have homes there. That will, will be our home base as we work under the direction of the Savior. And we'll have wonderful reunions there in between our missions. It will be a glorious place where the vibrations will just radiate constantly. We'll feel the love of the Lord tangibly. We will be beacons of light. We will be pillars of fire. Blessings that have begun for us will just continue to accelerate. So I bless all of us one more time with physical strength, spiritual devotion, and emotional stability as we face these small but trying times. The trials are real, but we will overcome them, and the Lord is watching over us, and I leave this blessing upon us all in the name of Jesus Christ, and fill it up unto heaven. Amen. Mr. Pulowski, did you hear talk in there of portals? Yes. Do you know what was being referenced? My understanding is uh, at the time, well, now is, and at the time was that upon reaching a certain ability or level of spiritual worthiness and, and, uh, and strength, you could open up a portal and step through it and land anywhere you saw fit. Is that something that you had ever learned about before in religious teachings? Not in that context, no. And then there was talk of cords as well. Mm -hmm. um, cutting cords. Do you recall that? Yes. Do you know what was meant by reference to cords? My understanding is cords kind of act as anchors to negative things or positive things, things that tie you to a negative force or a positive force. Was that something that you'd heard about before in a religious context? No. And then there was reference to removing spiritual weapons. Had you, do you know what was meant by that? Uh, that they were a similar to cords was my understanding that there's something that could bind itself to you basically and wound you spiritually. Had you ever heard of that type of teaching in a religious setting before? No. Do you, and then did you hear in there recall um, talk of the 144,000? Yes. And do you know what Chad's role was with the 144,000 or what he claimed it to be? 144,000 would be the group of individuals that would bring in the second coming of Jesus Christ. Do you know if Chad and Lori designated themselves the leaders of that group? It seemed that way, yes. And do you recall again reference to the of darkness in the police? Yes. I think he made reference to the telestial police force. Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you know what would have been meant by the telestial? 
So in uh, traditional LDS faith, there are three kingdoms that you would pass into um, after judgment, the celestial, the terrestrial, and telestial. So telestial is basically the earth that we live on now. Terrestrial is a step beyond that. Celestial is, you know, the full fullness of glory. So the telestial police would reference the police here on earth? Correct. And you recall in their chat indicating that they would have greater things to deal with? Eventually. Yes. And then a reference that it would open the way for us to use our powers fully. Yes. And then do you recall Chad saying it, that they could continue to cleanse the earth? Yes. Do you know what they intended to cleanse the earth of? Um, not specifically. There were, you know, things that Melanie had shared. She was worried about. Um, there were, um, there were discussions of earthquakes that could happen to, you know, tear down, it, you know, there was one that was talked about that was going to happen in Utah. And at that point, you know, anybody who was wounded or weakened would be possessed and, you know, you'd have to cleanse those people or cast out, you know, whatever would possess them. Um, casting out wickedness, spreading the gospel, that, you know, that sort of thing. So the people that would be cleansed or cast out would be those that were possessed? Correct. So those labeled dark? Correct. There's more to come in the trial of Chad Daybell. Press subscribe so you don't miss any of our continuing coverage right here from True Crime Today and the Hidden Killers podcast.